when Haman and uh, Mr. Mucha approached me, they said, your group was apolitical and that you were very concerned with the divide that is taking place with you people abroad here. And you wanted to find a midway where all of you could meet to move forward and ask if I'll avail myself to talk to you people on this. I said, well, that would be a nice opportunity. But before this, I've called on different medias, whether the Anglophone elites at home and abroad could meet somewhere, talk and look for a way forward. This fell on deaf ears, but they turned, give me instructions, oh, Frundi, you're not supposed to do this, your time is passed. I said, yes, my time is passed. As we also, I, I came into 40, politics at the age of about uh, 48, 49. And some of you are around that age bracket. Your own time shall pass, but it's not the time passing. What shall you have done within this period to have something when you reach my own age, praying that God helps us all to reach this age. Uh, today, I do not know whether I'm talking to independent, open-minded people who are looking for a way forward, who I'm talking to Ambazonians who already have a fixed pro program and they want everybody to tow their line. Uh, I've followed the struggle all along and I feel really hurt that it's all a blame game now. Foncha Mona didn't do it right. Monzu Ella Tanyangwe didn't do it right. Frundi did not do it right. We are the people who are right. And this is what we want to do. I think that in a struggle and as students of history, when you are moving forward, you have to find out, did Foncha Muna, looking at the situation they found themselves in, did they do anything good that we could copy that one and then move forward? And if they were all wrong and they didn't do anything good, how came it that they moved out of the Lagos House of Assembly as we keep quoting? What is it that motivated them? Something came in and uh, they had to move from the Lagos House of Assembly as a group. They all agreed to the Eastern House of Assembly. What is it that pushed them out of the Eastern House of Assembly before they came to form the West Cameroon House of Assembly? They went as a group. But you are here educated and you are open to the world and you cannot bring yourself together, yourselves together. And you have different groups here. Oh, my own boys are here. I have my boys on the field. I have, and all those boys who are calling, they are there dying. And when you cannot find a way out, you oh, but Frundi did not get out of parliament. He was supposed to get out of parliament. I say, please, for Frundi to form the party, we sat down, discussed, debated, and came out with a program which is sold out to people. They bought this program. And if I find myself at a position where people are telling you, just with guns, get out of parliament, get, we'll teach you a lesson, this and that. It's not teaching a lesson to anybody or to a group of people. It's looking for a way forward. Can we as Anglophones who believe that we have a problem, look for solutions? We are in an, in an I've been insulted, I've been cheeked, but because of my love for my native land, I still stand firm that we have to look for a way forward. So, and in this vein, the LGF is a political party that has a program. We have a manifesto. We have a, a constitution for the party, but here it suffice that somebody just out of and say, I formed my own group. 
align myself to this. But before I go any further, can you clarify this? Am I addressing an Amazonian meeting or I am addressing a town hall meeting that is apolitical and looking for a way, a midway where all the warring factions or uh, people disagreeing can come together for us to move forward? Because if it's an Amazonian meeting, I want to pull out of it. Because I was embarrassed when I saw the flyers showing Amazonian flags and all the like. No, please, let us have the meeting straight. Let us have the facts straight. Because if I said that in my remarks on Mr. Bia Severally, I've said he's a man of bad faith. But what people have done me is bad faith. Because you tell me that you are a political and you want to look for solutions. With all that, the pain that I've gone through in this, I swallowed my pride and said, well, in whatever, whatever happens, we have to talk and I'll keep talking. And so that's why I'm here. So can you make, please, with all due respect, make it clear for me, am I in an Amazonian meeting or uh, I'm in a meeting where it's a political and uh, there are concerned Anglophones who want to look for a way forward. Yeah. And uh, if I came into this meeting, it was with the open mind and the humble appeal that if the town hall could step in to get, put some sanity among the warlords out here in Europe and America. For us to come together and look for a way forward. You can be talking here, you don't know what I face on the field, what I see, it hurts. So can we stop this fighting over money and the blackmails of this and that. This morning, they posted me some uh, videos of insults on this, insults on that. And you are insulting and talking of how the in international community will uh, support you. There are people there that follow your struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. And they want to deal with matured people. Are we really matured and fighting it the way we should, uh, the way other people have fought theirs? So, I want to know whether your organization is out to see how you stop this infighting. Because the infighting amongst the leadership out here is transferred to the field where the boys who are supposed to be fighting on the field are now killing themselves more than Mr. Bia's army is killing. You can try to blackmail that, oh, these boys were killed here by, uh, by, 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 by uh, Mr. Bia's army, oh, they were killed there. But there are lots and lots of things that have been done by the boys because they are not schooled and they are not directed. I'm sorry and afraid that if we go this way, we'll kill ourselves more because the situation is not the way I thought we'll find ourselves in to see how we move forward. So the question I ask myself is, have we anglophone problems? Yes, we have the problems. If we have the problems, it is your post, in your place now to sit down and look for a solution. I do not believe in war. I had my own approach. And the approach is that I still have deep in me that conviction that an Anglophone can be present in Cameroon and lead and correct these things. So, and that's why we say, 
we have to talk. We have to come together to look for a way forward. And as you people say, when you're looking for a way forward in a situation like this, you don't count how many people have died on each side. You don't try to count what is happening here and there. We move forward. But if the moving forward is that the boys on the field will still be emitting on the people the type of things I see, cutting fingers, cutting heads. Look at the, the my first approach to these struggles was when they killed the boys in Pinyin. And you saw the way, again, in the Pinyin, Florence Ayafa was treated by the Amber Boys. Whether me and you say what, say, say what, uh, and what, we came out, we came from a, a woman. And for you to strip a woman naked, open her motherhood, and you are pointing you are gone between her legs was not a good thing for me. Two wrongs don't make a right. So I believe that if you people bring your people together for them to be under one leadership and we go to the field, the situation will be different. But if everybody must have his own arm, you have a lab come, come in Mankon, you have the Tinkal camp, you have the Chomba, you have Bali, you have barefoot, upper barefoot, lower barefoot, uh, meat, lower barefoot, meat, barefoot, all. You have, so every quarter now has the armed groups. Let me be very frank to you here. Some of the boys came up to me to tell me that, look, you see, I'm general this. And I saw before me the hardened criminal who escaped out of prison. You tell me you're general. And the general is not under me that I could direct him. And some of them tortured people so badly that when they killed a certain general, no mercy in Kumba. The picture showed a small boy who said, look, you will film me, film me killing this man. He's destroyed us here so much, carried a stick, I mean, a big stone and threw on the head of this young man. So we should also take note that the people on the field are tired. You don't want to face the type of treatments they're facing. I will not want to recall what's happened to me and the theft that they've carried on my own properties, destructions of this and that. And even now they're still drumming their chest. We are waiting for Frundi to build his house in the village. When he finishes the house, we'll go and burn it down. So when you have to treat the people that should be helping you this way, how do we get on? And I saw that this thing is not a thing that started today. I'm happy that in your town hall meeting, you are able to allow me to talk a bit without being interrupted the way I was with Chris Anu. And Chris Anu in his interview told me that he visited uh, late Mokong, may he rest in peace, staying behind my house. And when we were going, Mokong told him, he said, you see this house? He said, yes. He said, when we take over this house, we'll come down. Before I knew Mokong had built my house. And in my own politics, I told people that we would not destroy property. If we discover, investigate, and find out truly that you embezzled money to build, to invest, we'll take all those investments for the government. But I find myself in a situation where burn itself down and teach my lesson. Cut their hands, cut their fingers, cut their heads. These instructions are given by people who say you are fighting with the United, uh, you wanted the United Nations and all the like to help you. I don't think that they'll be happy to see this thing to give you a helping hand. So, you'll say you are doing it because uh, Mr. Bia's troops are doing the same thing. It's we who have a case to plead. 
for the sympathy of the people of the United Nations. Now, they came up with this uh, groups for reconstruction. On the field, they said people should not come out, don't receive them. The groups of reconstruction, maybe it's not going the right way that they are still fighting and they want to bring this into water down the fighting. But the funds are not from Mr. Bia, they are international funds. And when you don't take those to continue asking for more, you might not have them. So there's so much that is going on. And uh, I think I want to rest my case here because I believe that this is a discussion. And during our discussions, I might have more to explain. During our discussion, I might have more to ask me. And uh, so, if I can rest my case here, and then you will ask you. questions. Or... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much um, for sharing your thoughts with us. Um, we would uh, hand over to the Secretariat because we ask people to route questions through the Secretariat. So, um, Secretariat, if you're ready, um, go ahead. Uh, this is the first question. It says, uh, Mr. Chairman, irrespective of how we got here, what do you think is the best path forward for Anglophones right now? The Anglophone warlords abroad should come together as a team if they want, if they are honest and not fighting for themselves. Because I do not see how just in Washington there, you have about four or five people who tell you that they have their own organizations. The organizations are so many that if you ask me who is who now, I will not, I will not give you an answer. So, what do, what the, the best path for forward, uh, best path forward for Anglophones right now is first, let the leadership come together and strategize. Okay, Secretary, is, okay, the second question. Mr. Chairman, in your remarks, you mentioned your inability to unite Anglophone Southern Cameroonian elites to discuss the way out of our current suffering. In your opinion, what has been the main obstacle to our people coming up with a collective strategy and solution to our debacle? Now you ask the people who are fighting because people have their own war, their own war fronts. People have their own things to do. People are collecting their own money. And uh, in the midst of this collecting of the money, they tell you, oh, Mr. B, I get Frundi money. And I want anybody who knows that Mr. B, I gave me money and he saw to prove it out. And some of the boys who are being so vocal, rude and arrogant out here, uh, people who are out here on my signature that I gave them letters to, for them to be granted asylums. But it has to be rudeness, cheekiness, and all the like. Can we put all this behind us and you people come together? It was not me to bring the Anglophones together. A follow-up question. We, we, this we, also this applies. Excuse me. excuse me, sir. The Anglophones have not elected me to be one to bring them together. If you had done that, that the SDF should bring us together, then I can go reflect and start knowing what to do. But if you didn't do that. Okay. Does this, uh, Mr. sorry, Mr. Moderator, a follow-up question. Does this also apply to the Anglophone elite at home, this infighting? Anglophone elite at home are not fighting. Tell me the elites that are fighting back home. Let me see. For hundreds of years. And if you think that going through war, the way we are going, will win, well, right, you go ahead. 
But you cannot be fighting the war and killing the people that you are struggling to protect. It doesn't help. It doesn't go that way. I just read to you, like I hear, I hope that people see what I see on the social media. Somebody, we don't want to hear a French spoken in West Cameroon. Nobody, Amberland, nobody should speak French there. I mean, are we honest in what we are saying? And the Amber boys on the road, they meet you, they destroy your identity card and give an Amber identity. When you show that Amber identity to the police, you are in trouble. They say you are the people sponsoring Amber. How do we do things this way without helping the people that are suffering on the field? So we have to sit down and talk. We have to strategize and still see it. Okay. Now, when people went to the United Nations, oh, we've been to the United Nations, this and that. Before you went there, I'd been there more than five times. Before the, you, you went to the White House, I'd been there more than five times. I've been to the Bundestag, I've been to the uh, Commonwealth, I've been to Champs-Élysées in France, I've been to all these places. You have to know some of the replies they gave me. I know you tell me, okay, can you tell us what they told you? I should say it on a, an open forum like this. In every war, you have the war planners that sit down to plan what they can do. But I see most of you very scattered. And somebody is asking me about seven questions at a time. Can you tell us this? Can you tell us that? Can I didn't come for you. To, I mean, I'm not in a classroom to be telling you this and that and that. We are out here discussing the way forward. How can we move forward where we find ourselves now? How can we move forward? So you will tell me. If I, through the town hall, okay. And you want me to come for us to discuss more? Fine, you let me know. But the way things are going, I don't think that we'll find a way. I'm afraid. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, but, uh... Would you have some more time to take a couple more questions? Yes, there's one in front of me here in 2017. Yes. Uh, it, it says, um, Mr. Chairman, in 2017, Honorable Weber, MP from Jakiri, heard the cries of his people, the human rights violation on the people he represents. He became a wanted gentleman. Unfortunately, the SDF, a party whose manifesto held in high esteem the people it represents apparently abandoned Weber to the wolves. Can you please comment on the SDF's treatment of Honorable Weber? Honorable Weber abandoned the SDF. It's not the SDF that abandoned Honorable Weber. When Weber, <clears throat> that day in parliament, a couple of people spoke harshly and hardly. They blocked parliament. Today, when they tell you, oh, what has the SDF done? What have they? Look, the songs people sing here, now how many people be here we kill? That's what the SDF crafted in parliament. I hear it being sung in France here and everywhere. Weber came to me and said, Joe, congratulations. You articulated very well, congratulations. But we have to take it from here as a party. Before I realized, Weber had a, a, a rally in a Yakiri. Went to and saw and told the people, okay, hold tight. Had a rally and said he was going to have a rally in Victoria, Boya, this and that. And some of your people said, but Chairman, you could have followed Weber. That was very stupid for somebody to tell me that. Weber is in a party. And I think that is the party now that should take off. If the party blocked Weber, that would have been something different. The party never blocked Weber. Honorable Njitma Sang also spoke that day. And it's just that. Weber organized that his speech should be taped and he played it out. If they play Tumasang's own, you'll see that even Tumasang was more harsh. He was harsher. And as I said in other interviews, 
we back up, waited for the BS government to arrest him. We'll see how the government now will arrest a parliamentarian. And that's where the thing craft started. If in 1990, when I, we formed the SDF, you are chasing me with helicopters, shooting guns, shot at me, did everything. If I'd escaped and gotten out of the way, I don't think that you'll be questioning me the way you're questioning me today. Now, Weber attended to his constituency. Where did he leave the people as he took off? If you wrote the book he wrote, that book is about Cameroon. He should launch it in Cameroon. <laughs> All of us will be there. Some of your people that were later on arrested, I had to protect them. When we went, had the, the first meeting we had at the, where is that again? Commercial Avenue. Ngalim was there with uh, Mr. Mancho. I knew that they were going to arrest Mancho that day. I took Ngalim in, I mean, the Mancho in my car, car and said, let's go. They probably arrested him there. They will tell you how many children have gone from one police station, from one gendarme cell to release. Either because they said they don't have identity cards or the identity cards have been manipulated. They wanted them to give 5,000 and you see a boy naked in the police cell. They said it should be 5,000. I went mad that day. And I was hitting on the door, cell, please get the children, get this, let me talk to the children. When they came out, I asked, what have you done? They said, they said, I'm not getting an ID card. What have you done? They said, no, that's a hardened criminal. I said, okay. Those boys are relieved them. By the time I got up to the gendarmerie up station, the boys that they had kept there, they removed them from the cell and took them behind the Nangas Hotel. I didn't know. They dropped them in the mud and they were washing them with water from uh, the uh, car wash point to take them to Bafusan. We managed to do some of them. And these things were done by me and sometimes the parliamentarians. But when the parliamentarian does one thing and he goes off, ask me back, can you also ask me back, have you kept in touch with Frundi? What has Frundi said? What has Frundi done in your support? But Riba was calling on us to leave parliament. As I said, he had given a procuration for his monies to be taken. And they were taking the monies and sending it to him. So I do not know where he put his answer of Riba. Riba had to act on, at, on the point of a political party. If Riba had, hadn't the SDF to act on, and he acted alone in so nobody could have hurt him. And so <clears throat> I believe that whatever thing we are doing, we have to keep talking. Now, these last elections, the Amber boys called me and said, Friendly, you are wasting your time. <clears throat> we'll vote for CPDM because you didn't give us money. The CPDM gave us money. I have it on record, record it. So I found, found myself where Mr. Bia's army was there voting for the CPDM and uh, the Amber boys were voting for CPDM. And he said, we should get out of parliament. Now that the SDF is not in parliament, negligible. The independence is not coming. They are still killing more children on the, on, on, on the streets. The children are still calling LDF people, please, can you give us money for groundnuts? Where do they get this money from? I don't know whether some of you or one of you has gone to Cameroon to really see the misery which the people in the North Southwest are going through. I agree that Mr. Bia's army destroyed quite a lot of farms, but the Ambazonian boys destroyed so much too. They did. 
Okay. And these are the people they want help from them. These are the people they say they are fighting for them to be uh, better people tomorrow. How do we do that? How do we get through that? Okay, let, let's take another question, uh, which has come up here. Listen to each other. But yes. if you have children come out of the bush with guns and tell you, get out of this way, get, tell me, have you ever called me to say, Rundi, let us meet and talk to see how we can do these things? Or you send boys to come burn my house. They've carried all my animals, kill people. And they say, if you don't do this, we'll shoot you, we'll shoot. I mean, please, we are talking about the lives of a people. And you, if you've ever had, if you have children, you've circled, your wife has suckled a child, you hold your child, you will not support war. And if you want to support war, announced it on the BBC, VOA, all the radio stations. Can we meet and talk? You say, no, just get out of parliament. You think that you tell me that I start running out of parliament? I will not. Can we sit down and talk? Can we sit down and talk? You tell me that strategically, this is where we're going to, this is what we've done, and this is where we'll get to. You don't just stand up and dash words to front you. Get out of parliament. I don't know who you are. You are they say you are Dr. G. Dr. G, please, with all due respect to you, I cannot get out of parliament like that. The support base has fallen, yes, because of this misunderstanding. Because of you thinking that your point is right, tell Frundi to do this. Frundi also has a right to stand at, on his own points. Now, you are talking here. I see these boys out on the field there. I feel sorry for them. They tell me that they've gone to Odeshi and they can uh, catch bullets. And the way they're killing them, look, please, I'm talking with tears in my eyes. Odeshi tells you that you should not wear shoes. And children running through the bushes of Northwest, Southwest with all the uh, palm creeks pricking their feet and all the like. Bare body with them guns. I think in the war, we have to do everything to protect the people that are fighting for us because we need them. It's not sending people to go and die like uh, ugly cows in a, uh, a diseased house. Have you ever called me? Has any of you on this forum ever called me to say, Frundi, you are here. Can we meet down? Can we sit down and talk? Chris Anu came and all he did was try to ridicule blackmail. Can we desist from this blackmail, ridiculing, and all the like? Sit down and put the issues on the table and talk about the uh, Cameroon Anglophone problems, whether they're Ambazonian or Southern Cameroon or West Cameroon or whatever. Can we sit down and talk? What is it that makes you think that you are more Anglophone than myself? What is it that makes you think that you? know it all than myself. That's why when I started, I said we should not blame Foncha, Mona, and all these people. <laughs> because we've not gone back to see what the truth and what they did. Because you're not seeing the truth and all that I've done to see what can I pick from this to move forward. No. You only tell me, get out of the parliament. I'm going to bury Banazim in, in so. People organized boys to abduct me, took me to the bush. They teach my lesson, teach my lesson. How does that help the cause? All the, oh, the bush, the, how they abducted me in a, uh, uh, in a lab come and hidden. A woman had farmed her food. The beans was getting rotten. She could not come to harvest the beans. I told the boys in a lab come, I said, please, in every war, you do not destroy food because you need the food. This woman cannot come to harvest her corn, she can't harvest her beans. So you, the leadership, you've come out to fight Frundi. Frundi is here, and I'm still talking to you. Because even the boys in the lab who treated me the way they treated. When I had to come here the first time for my treatment, I knew that they'll be having the talks. I still invited them, please come and meet me. Come talk to me. Let me know what you want me. If I come back for these talks, I will talk. I swallowed my pride then. 
the wounds were still fresh on me. The day, the evening they came to my compound, they were all armed, gone through. I said, look, if you don't trust me, then I will not trust you. And some of you outside here talk as if what you've done, nobody's ever done. You don't know what the people inside, you don't know what Bandam has done. You don't know what other people have done. So that's why I ask you, have you sat down? Have you called to ask, what have you done? Where are you? They are saying you should go this way. Why are you saying you cannot go that way? So please, you, you to, to tell me that you've not done this. What have you done? You think that by sitting here to give instructions and the boys are killing themselves on the field. How many of you have really come to Bamenda to see? Huh? Please. Okay, let's take. But let let's take one more comment. So uh, you don't feel like um, you're all, you know, defending SDF by yourself. We'll call on another SDF stalwart, uh, Dr. Eugene. Uh, okay, just uh, two minutes, uh, Dr. Eugene. Just two yeah. minutes for this section. Thank you very much, Mr. Ator. Um, you have a wonderful platform, which is the Southern. Cameroon International Town Hall. I know you have real good intentions. You have illiterates among your group. When you start by saying you are apolitical, and then someone say you are non-partisan, and on your flyer you have the Ambazonian flag, that is dishonesty. That is why the chairman started this uh, discussion very contentiously. Without those flags, there is something they call perception. You could understand that these are the group, this, this is a group of genuine Southern Cameroonians who are coming on the table with their hands clean. To Dr. G, I have not heard Amber calling for the CPDM Southern Cameroonian members to leave the parliament. Why are your concern only with the SDF parliamentarians? In the last parliament, out of the 19 parliamentarians from the Southwest region, SDF had one. If the chairman pull that, pulls that one out of the parliament, it is an insignificant number. Now you block the SDF in the Northwest and the Southwest, and now you are being represented by the CPDM. Have you called the CPDM parliamentarians to step down? Is your fight against Paul Beer or against the SDF? I hear you call my friend, Padi Asanga, that he is out demonizing, demonizing the uh, Ambazonians. Padi Asanga is a Southern Cameroonian whose opinion matters. And we have never sat down as a group to give legitimacy to anybody to speak on the behalf of Southern Cameroonians. So okay. if you think you, you have a right to your opinion, Padi Asanga, Eugene Ate, the national chairman, the SDF, they have their own right to this opinion. Okay. Unless thank we you. sit down thank as you. a group, thank we you. will not be able to move forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Eugene. Uh, uh, Dr. Foster, are you ready for closing? Okay. Uh, is it better? Yes. Two minutes, please. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I would like to say um, thank you to Pa for respecting the invite. I would also like to express my disappointment because from a woman's point of view, I came in here thinking that I was coming to listen to a father that is coming to talk to his children who are in pain, who are going through something he himself has gone through. I was expecting that when I come in here, I would listen to advice or I would listen to some consoling words and a way forward. I am disappointed because I expected power to condemn 
what he has been witnessing for the past, I don't know how many years. I was a baby when I was growing up, when, there were, when he had the rallies in Bamena and all of that, I was still growing up. I am disappointed because he seems not to feel the pain, especially because that is something he has gone through. I wanted to hear the voice of a father who is looking for a solution. That is what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear him condemn the death of baby Martha. I wanted to hear him condemn the baby that was taken from the back of a mother and thrown into hot oil. I wanted him to condemn the burning of Mami Api in a house. That is what I expected to hear. My question is, when you leave this meeting today, what are you taking along or what are you leaving with us? What have we learned? Are we taking anything with us, anything positive or are we taking just negativity? I'm sorry, I'm just expressing my my frustration, and I think many people share this. I think we came into, or, or let me say, what we are looking for in this meeting are solutions. We are looking for a way forward. Our people are dying, and we are dying because we are we 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 want to live like people. We don't want to live like second class people. We are here to restore our statehood, and we are going to stay on that lane. And we want to be inclusive. I mean, everybody should be on the table but we want people to come in and leave the politics behind and be human beings. I am a mother, my children are dying, my brothers, my sisters are dying. So pa, I am sorry, um, please next time come with a solution oriented mind. Let us talk and like you're talking to your children with, um, I don't know, with consoling words and advice for a way forward. The most things that I heard here where I, 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 where I, 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 or this is what I've done, this is what I've done, this is what I've done, or this is what you have not done right, or this is what is supposed to be done, or you, it is, it doesn't help. Again, I am sorry, but I had to say this as a mother who is losing her children. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, um, Comrade Elino. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's our tradition to have always taken comments, but given the last word to the uh, to the guest speaker, uh, you've heard um, all the comments from those in attendance, Southern Cameroonians. I I I I, I don't know what's on your mind, but you have the floor for your closing uh, remarks. Well, once more, I want to thank the organizers who've uh, brought all these meetings for us to come together and talk. I want to let the lady panelist who spoke that if she's disappointed, I am more disappointed. More so because we're in a country where Martin Luther started fighting here. It didn't end at his level. Jesse Jackson came. Obama came, they were still fighting him. All these people stood their grounds and the, and the fighting continues. But you invited me for a meeting where I thought, as people said, are political. You are looking for a way to bring all the warring factions. You've directly or indirectly not brought that down to bring all these warring factors here together, the people who are sponsoring, collecting monies and doing what they're doing here in Europe, uh, in America. I thought that you will tell me that, okay, from what we've discussed, we'll summon all these people who, 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 who let them come together so that we start talking how we move on. So you are inviting me to a meeting with a fixed program. We want to bring it to accept what we are saying. I didn't come to accept, for you to accept what I'm saying. I thought I was coming for us to have a meeting point but I'm very disappointed that it is the same thing again. Freely, you could have gotten out of parliament. You failed, you've lost here, you've lost there. And you bring Padi Asanga, oh, you see about Padi Asanga. Why can you be attacking me and you don't want somebody else to attack you? Have you heard my own comments to Mr. Bia when I face him? I've never spoken to him 
from a begging angle. But it's you, the elitist people out here, who keep on saying, Frundi has accepted money. Frundi has taken money from Sabia. Madam, I have to say I, because it's what I've done. And more so, uh, more so, I think we are not yet settled to accept certain truths. that you should accept that we should come together. You should bring your people together. You should bring all the people who are sponsoring factions back in Cameroon, Chu Ayaba, the Bohabat, the, the, this and that. I got here and somebody wrote me a letter from Cameroon. Say, Mr. Chairman, we're told that you said you wanted to meet Sako. Sorry, don't waste your time because you'll not meet Sako. You only meet him when you get to Boya. I said, oh, interesting, sir. Good luck. Safe journey to Boya. When we get to Boya, we'll not see you. What do you need to see me in Boya for? My quarrel still remains, Madam, please, and all of you on the panel. Can you bring sanity into what was ha is happening? You've disgraced the anglophone struggle by people only fighting for money. You hear how this one is killing this, that one is doing that, the money is that is involved, my, please, I'm sorry. And I feel very hurt because I expected that at the end of this meeting, you will tell me that where well, we've heard your point, we'll get the people who are sponsoring people in Cameroon together, first talk with them, bring them together, and then we'll see how we can. How can you tell me that I should accept the abduction of, you say I should not use I, but I want to use it. The abduction of the Archbishop of Bamenda. He was in the bush for two days. How do you want me to accept the abduction of the Bishop of Kumbo? The maltreatment of the foreign so and all these people. I think in every war, there are certain people that we cannot touch. And, uh, I want to say that uh, and the call from out here that children should not go to school. 2006, they never went to school. Seven, eight, nine. It's almost four or five years now. And uh, I've seen the government that you've performed out here. And you tell us that we should go tie the, uh, the governor of the South West of the SDOs, and then the leaders will learn in Tico, come and take over. Let me keep that aside. The children here are going to school. Have you ever thought of your children coming back to meet the children in Cameroon who have not gone to school. Will that mix be okay? You think that you, you, those children will look at your children from a, a, a good angle? What are we talking about? You expected to hear from me. What I am saying is that until you bring yourselves together, you'll be fighting a losing war. Your directives are not coordinated. Uh, Padia Sangha is there doing its own, as some of you are on Frundi. And as you rightly say, who is the enemy? Is it Bia or Frundi? At least if you are talking today, please, can you for once give Frundi the, uh, the thanks that you withstood it? They've shot at me. As Madam, I'll still say yes, they've shot at me. They've poisoned me. They've done everything to get me eliminated. So, when this all comes out, you see, what, what is it you expected to hear from me? That I'm happy with the way your people are brought here, are uh, telling the boys back home 
to behave. Some of you are talking, you don't know how much some of us have contributed, sir, for Pete's sake. And with all this, I listened to somebody talking this morning that he contributed $2,000 and was so happy. <laughs> I laughed. Before Ojuku declared the war against Gawan, Ojuku was a trained soldier. And in Nigeria, they said all the soldiers from the Eastern region should go back to the East. They all went. The military equipment should remain there. And today, I stand grateful to our fathers who left the Lagos House of Assembly to the Eastern House of Assembly, and who left the Eastern House of Assembly to the West Cameroon House of Assembly, if they made a mistake to have gone to the Eastern House of Assembly, because the Nigerian Biafran War, the Anglophone section of Cameroon could have been the battlefield. We've never looked at this to thank them. We think that what we're doing here is what we're right. Can you, in your own comfort zones, try to look back with gratefulness to the old people that have gone ahead? And then we start organizing ourselves. How do we get on from here? They had no qualification. They had no qualifications. But they were able to take those decisions and march forward. But it seems the qualifications, again, bring so much confusion and we you have to do it the way I want. We have to do it the way we want. And sit down and reconcile ourselves and see how we move forward. And bring some of those old people, people like Cardinal Tumi. He has to come in. So thank you. I want to thank you all. Thank you. And said, being the first meeting, we might not have all got well, but I want to thank uh, Mr. Mucha and uh, Mr. Ndofo, who contacted me, and to say it's because of the pain I have on the ground and what I'm seeing and what I'm going through, that when I noticed that the flyers you sent were with Amazonian backgrounds and all the like, I still accepted for us to talk. When the boys abducted me in Al Abu Kham, they brought the Ambazonian flag to tie on me and to picture me. I said, no, you cannot do that. I'm the chairman of the SDF. You can't do that to me. They removed it. And they said, I should stand up for the anthem to be sung. I stood up. They sang the anthem. And let me confess to you, they sang it well. It was nice. But when the SDF came, we never forced people. We had to talk, convince people. Can we talk from a convincing point to convince the Anglophones to give us the support? Because, madam, you talked with, with so, such bitterness, and I saw your body trembling. I want to say that now on the field, some of the people think that they have to fight the embers because they've had it too much. And when their people will turn against you, as you're saying that people turned against me in the North and Southwest, it will not be, it will not go well with us. So this is the beginning. Mommy. You'll go sit down, review the suffer to see what I said, what you said, and see how you can start marching on from here. If the next meeting is coming up. I would love for us to sit in the hall so that we talk, looking at each other in the face. Each other in the face, not to talk on the Zoom. I want to congratulate you for your efforts, for your initiative, and for you concerned people thinking that we should look for a way forward. I am for that way forward, but we should come with clean, honest hearts. I'm not thinking that we have to come and fight somebody. I'm not here to fight anybody. I came into politics selfless. 
And two years ago, I handed the button of the parliamentary uh, presidential elections to a younger person. All of you are young, there's none of you who, who's my age. But I came into politics young. And I used my age. I never went to parliament to start fighting. I never went to Senate, to council to start fighting as my colleagues did. Some were parliamentarian and Senate, uh, uh, parliamentarian and uh, uh, mayor. And when we shouted that you cannot have the two positions, as they were coming back to be mayor, they sent their wives in as parliamentarian. But I never did that. Because I want us, I wanted, like in the interview I had with uh, Chris Arnold, <coughs> excuse me, people uh, were asking me, Frudy, what's your legacy? My legacy is that I wanted to train leaders that will take up and get on. It is not for Frundi to, I'm in parliament, oh, so that I can have money in my pocket. I'm here so that I can have this. No. I came into politics selfless. And uh, we are where we are. I still throw the ball back in your courts. Can you people sit down, reconcile yourselves? And when you are prepared to move forward, we invite Anglophone Cameroonians to sit down and chat their way forward. It's not Frundi. Frundi has done the, the, that which you could. People challenge me at that time. You say, you, you brought us the power to talk. You did this. That can, is that a lie? Just to launch the SDA, people ran. People, their children were hiding in different corners. And the light on me is that uh, I sent all my children abroad. All my children were there in Secret Heart, P PSS, Man Corner, and all the like. So, and today we're where we are. Can we look onto these children with sympathy? A rough. Uh, the statistics show from around the front of Mancon that they took children between girls between 13 and 20 for screening. 95% of them were infected with HIV from these boys. So is that fair for us? Do we know what we're losing? Are we looking at what is happening in Southern Sudan? Are we seeing what happened in Sierra Leone where the, the children, because of, I was in their camp just for one day, one night. I came and had a head spin that is still affecting me to today. I will go of how we have to detoxify those children to sort of cleanse them to come back to normal. Not until we are able to do that, I will not want to associate myself. I'm sorry to say this at last. Can we sit down or get our pins and see how we move forward? Thank you all very much. I wish you success in your efforts to iron out things and God's richest blessings. God Thank you. Me. Thank you very much. Um... Mr. Chairman, Nee John Frundi, thank you for taking uh, your time this Saturday. We appreciate what you have said. Uh, again, this town hall, uh, irrespective of political affiliation or political beliefs, as you said, the right thing is for us to sit down and talk. Many of us in this house, 